we are hearing Shriman Bhagavatam. According to our maths calculation for Slovenia, there is Mahadvadashi fasting tomorrow for Parshva Ekadashi. So we are observing tomorrow. Today we are hearing Bhagavatam. Chapter 20 in third canto. Shonaka uvach. Mahim pratishtam adhyasya saute svayam bhuvo manur kanya vatishtat dvarani marga yavara janmanam. Shri Shonaka inquired. O Sutta Gosami, after the earth was again situated in its orbit, what did Swayambhuva Manu do to show the path of liberation to persons who were to take birth later on? Here, uh, Baraha Bhagavan lifted earth. Then Swayambhuva Manu. Kshata Mahabhagavata Krishna se kantika suhrit yas tatya jagrajam krishna sapatyam agavan iti. Shona Karishi inquired about Vidur, who was a great devotee and friend of Lord Krishna and who gave up the company of his elder brother because the latter, along with his sons, played tricks against the desires of the Lord. That is Dhritarashtra. Dvei Payanat Anavaro Mahitveta Sedehajah Sarvatmana Shrita Krishnam Tat Param Shchapyanu Vrata Vidur was born from the body of Veda Vyas and was not less than he. Thus he accepted the lotus feet of Krishna wholeheartedly and was attached to his devotees. There are degrees of how much one accepts the lotus feet of Krishna many stages, so he accepted wholeheartedly. That is pure devotion. That is why he has no false ego, no problem, and always in blissful state. Kim Anva Prichan Maitreyam Viraja Stirta Seva Upagamya Kushavarta Asinam Tattva Vitamam Vidur was purified of all passion by wandering in sacred places and at last he reached Haridwar where he met the great sage who knew the science of spiritual life and he inquired from him. Shona Karishi therefore asked, what more did Vidur inquire from Maitreya? Tayo Sambadato Suta Pravrita Hyamala Kata Apo Ganga Ivaghagnir Hareh Padambu Jashreya. Shonaka inquired about the conversation between Vidur and Maitreya. There must have been many narrations of the spotless pastimes of the Lord. The hearing of such narrations is exactly like bathing in the water of the Ganges, for it can free one from all sinful reactions. Gangara Parasha Hoyle Paschate Pavan. If one touches Ganga, then he will be purified of all sins. And same result one will get just by hearing Harikata or getting darshan of pure devotee. So he 
Vidur was going to different pilgrim places to purify himself. That is by example, already he was pure. And the most important point is we have to meet pure devotee. That will be most beneficial because pure devotee is himself holy place. And from his mouth, pure Harikata is coming. So that will purify us and will give us devotion to Krishna. Ta nah kirtaya badram te kirta nyodara karmana rasa gyah konu tripeta hari lilamritam piba. O Sutta Gosami, all good fortune to you. Please narrate the activities of the Lord, which are all magnanimous and worth glorifying. What sort of devotee can be satiated by hearing the nectarian pastimes of the Lord? Devotees continuously they hear Harikata and they never feel bored or tired or stale. No, because they are getting all the time new, fresh, transcendental bliss. They are never satiated. They always want more. But that does not mean that they are having any material suffering. No, they are fully blissful. But at the same time, uh, they want more. They are never satisfied. But that not satisfied is not material insufficiency is on transcendental platform because that is unlimited so there is no end to that desire for service evam ugra shravah prishta rishibir naimishayanei bhagavati arpitantiyatmas tan aha shruyatam iti on being asked to speak by the great sages of Naimisharanya, the son of Romaharshan, that is Sutta Gosami, whose mind was absorbed in the transcendental past tense of the Lord, said, Please hear what I shall now speak. You remember Romaharshan Sutta was selected by sages to speak the Puranas but he had some false pride. So when Baladev came to that place, Baladev is original guru. Everyone stood up out of respect, but Romaharshan did not because he was on that raised platform, he was seated. So Baladev thought he is unable to speak Bhagavatam or Puranas. With false ego, no one can speak. So he killed him. Then. The sages said, but we gave him that position. Now who will speak? You please fulfill your desire, but also please fulfill our desire. And if someone is killed by Baladev, that is for his benefit. He got eternal welfare by that punishment. So then Baladev said, son, means father is reborn as his son. Son is not different from father. It is in Shastra. So his son, he will speak the Puranas. That is Sutta Gosami, pure devotee. No false ego. So Baladev installed him or appointed him. Hmm. He is not telling out of false ego. Please hear what I shall now speak. For like to impress others or for name and fame speeches like this. Out of compassion, he is saying, You please hear about the past tense of Supreme Lord. Then he will be satisfied and you will be benefited. 
Suta Uvač. Harer Drita Krora Tanov Samaya Nishamya Gor Udharanam Rasa Talat Lilam Hiranyaksham Avagyaya Hatam Sanjata Harshumunim Aha Bharataha. Suta Gosami continued. Vidur, the descendant of Bharata, was delighted to hear the story of the Lord, who, having assumed by his own divine potency the form of a boar, had enacted the sport of lifting the earth from the bottom of the ocean and indifferently killing the demon Hiranyaksha, I means very easily. Vidur then spoke to the sage as follows because he is supreme, not omnipotent, nothing is difficult for him. Vidur Uvach Prajapati Pati Shrishtva Praja Sarge Prajapatin Kim Arabhatame Brahman Pra Bruhi Avyakta Margavit. Vidur said, Since you know the matters inconceivable to us, tell me, O holy sage, what did Brahma do to create living beings after evolving the Prajapatis, the progenitors of living beings? There is no other way to get that knowledge except by hearing, because it is beyond us. Like if someone has a glass of water and I'm thirsty, I don't have it, so I have to receive it from him. So inconceivable matters for us can be given or spoken of only by those who can conceive them. They're having that realization or they heard from realized soul. So we have to receive with submission, with surrender, then we can get. Otherwise, by our own effort, with false ego, we cannot get those things. Only by surrender. Ye marici adayo vipra yastu soyam buvo manuh te vai brahmana adeshat katam etat abha vayan. Vidur inquired, how did the prajapatis such progenitors of living entities as Marichi and Svayambhuvamano create according to the instruction of Brahma and how did they evolve this manifested universe? Sadvitiya kim asrijan svatantra uta karmasu aho svit sam hatah sarva idam sma samakalpayan did they evolve the creation in conjunction with their respective wives? Did they remain independent in their action? Or did they all jointly produce it? Maitreya Uvach Daivena Durvitarkiena Parena Nimishena Cha Jata Kshobat Bhagavato Mahan Asid Guna Trayat. Maitreya said, When the equilibrium of the combination of the three modes of nature was agitated by the unseen activity of the living entity, by Mahavishnu and by the force of time, the total material elements were produced. That is when new creation comes then that equilibrium is agitated because new creation has to come but it is according to the karma of living entities from previous creation not totally from beginning but accordingly so that is also a drishta unseen activity of the living entity it means what was before what he did before we don't know what we did but still that information is there and we get the fruits accordingly and 
our Parangurudev used this word. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What we are doing, we get uh, Mother Suniti told to Druva what everyone is getting that sort of suffering, distress, as he inflicted upon others. There is no mistake in Supreme Lord. He is giving the fruits. So we have to see his grace in all circumstances, but that is not possible if we don't have that purified vision. At least based on faith, we have to accept that it is by the will of Krishna. And I'm reaping the fruits of my own actions. And for my own good. by Mahavishnu and the force of time. That time is energy of Krishna. No one can resist. He will take away everything. He is making and destroying. No one can resist. Only those who are liberated souls, they can cross beyond this time and then there is no pressure. Otherwise, all the time pressure. We are all slaves. But Mahavishnu is not slave. He is not in any hurry. He is doing Lila. He is not under any pressure. He is all the time doing Lila. And those who are other forms of Supreme Lord and his devotees, they are never under pressure. They, that is Lila. That is playful life. But those who are under Mahamaya, that is slavery all the time. Force, pressure. So it is not happy life, peaceful. Rajah Pradhanam Mahatas Trilingo Deva Choditat Jatah Sasarja Butadir Viat Adini Pancha Shah. As impelled by the destiny of the Jiva, the false ego, which is of three kinds, evolved from the Mahatattva, in which the elements of Rajas predominate. From the ego, in turn, evolved many groups of five principles. Uh, this creation, full sigo three kinds, sattvic, rajasic, tamasic. Here the primordial matter or prakriti, material nature, consisting of three modes, generates four groups of five. The first group is called elementary and consists of earth, water, fire, air and ether. The second group of five is called Tan Matra, referring to subtle elements, that is sense objects, sound, touch, form, taste and smell. The third group is the five sense organs for acquiring knowledge, eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin. The fourth group is the five working senses, speech, hands, feet, anus and genitals. Some say that there are five group of, groups of five. One group is the sense object, one is the five elements, one is the five sense organs for acquiring knowledge, that is Gyan and Driya. Another is senses for working, Karma and Driya. And the fifth group is the five deities who control these divisions. So this creation is going on. Tani Chekai Kashash Srashtum 
असमर्थानि भौतिकं संहात्य दैवयोगेन हैमं अंदं अवास्रिजान। Separately unable to produce the material universe, they combined with the help of the energy of the Supreme Lord and were able to produce a shining egg. Buddhists, they think that this is, and also materialistic scientists, they think it, it, hap it happens just automatically, how the elements they combine because they are unable to accept the Creator and Supreme Lord. So they explain in that way because they cannot see. But Shastra says and realized soul says that they are not just randomly and automatically. It is under the control of Supreme Lord. Also Gajendra said, by seeing this world, how everything is orderly going on, regulated like this, from this I can infer that there is some creator. So, shayish tabdi salile anda kosho niratmaka sagram vaivarsha sahasram anvavatsit tam ishvara. For over for over 1,000 years, the shiny egg lay on the waters of the causal ocean in the lifeless state. Then the Lord entered it as Garbodakashai Vishnu. Here in commentary, from this verse it appears that all the universes are floating in the causal ocean. Tasya Nabher Abhut Padmam Sahasrar Koru Didhiti Sarva Jivani Kayauko Yatra Soyam Abhut Swarat. From the navel of the personality of Godhead, Garbo the Kashai Vishnu, sprouted a lotus flower, effulgent like a thousand blazing suns. This lotus flower is the reservoir of all conditioned souls and the first living entity who came out of the lotus flower was the omnipotent Brahma. So in this sense, Jiva in this universe first is Brahma because all living entities, they are inside Brahma before they are manifested according to their karma. But one jiva is the Brahma, or sometimes if there is no qualified jiva to do the work of Brahma, then Krishna takes that form of Brahma. So Nuvishto Bhagavata Yakshete Salilashaye Loka Samstam Yata Purvam Nirmame Samstaya Soya. When that Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is lying on the Garbodaka ocean, entered the heart of Brahma, Brahma brought his intelligence to bear, and with the intelligence invoked, he began to create the universe as it was before. So here you see Brahma is not independent creator. Garbhodakashaya Vishnu, he enters the heart of Brahma. Then Brahma can understand and gets the power how to do. Yes, he was empowered. Here it is stated in this verse that Brahma created the universe as it was before. This means that he created everything by the same name and form as in the previous cosmic manifestation. Yeah. 
that is why we're there in Upanishad, but that is another long topic. Uh, some are saying how Vedas can be eternal since the names are there of different demigods, but demigods are destroyed like this. So it is explained that these names are prototype and they are eternal. And based on that prototype, when new creation come, they will be created accordingly. Well, that is a long topic. I don't want to go into that. Uh, so it is same but new creation. Same by specifics, but new, newly activated according to Jiva's previous karma in that creation. Sasarja chaya ya vidyam pancha parvanam agrata tamisram anda tamisram tamo moho mahatama. Brahma creates according to those Vedic uh, prototype which are eternal he makes. That topic you will find in Vedanta Sutra and uh, in some Upanishad also. Sasarja Chaya Yavityam Pancha Parvanam Agrata Tamisram Anda Tamisram Tamo Moho Mahatama I already read. First of all, Brahma created from his shadow the coverings of ignorance for the conditioned souls. They are five in number and are called Tamisra, Anda Tamisra, Tamas, Moha and Mahamoha. So here, in commentary, the conditioned souls or living entities who come to the material world to enjoy sense gratification are covered in the beginning by five different conditions. The first condition is a covering of tamisra or anger. Constitutionally, each and every living entity has minor independence. It is misuse of that minor independence for the conditioned soul to think that he can also enjoy like the Supreme Lord, or to think, why shall I not be a free enjoyer like the Supreme Lord? This forgetfulness of his constitutional position is due to anger or envy. The living entity, being eternally a part and parcel servitor of the Supreme Lord, can never, by constitution, be an equal enjoyer with the Lord. When he forgets this, however, and tries to be one with him, his condition is called Tamisra. Even in the field of spiritual realization, this Tamisra mentality of the living entity is hard to overcome. In trying to get out of the entanglement of material life, there are many who want to be one with the Supreme. Even in their transcendental activities, this lower grade mentality of Tamisra continues. I mean, transcendental activities means those who are practicing jnana. Uh, they think they can be equal to Bhagavan or those who are yogis, they are also transcendentalists. But this mentality of Tamisra also continues there because they are not accepting the service of Supreme Lord. Envy, word envy, we have to understand it can mean jealousy that we cannot tolerate the superiority of someone or some good qualities we cannot tolerate. So we try to compete with him or try to bring him down or like this. This is one 
meaning. But another meaning, envy, also can mean malice. Sometimes it is translated or meant in the form of malice, like violence, or like this. So it is not always jealousy. It can also mean violence. So uh, we externally we see that Arjuna is committing violence by so uh, by killing so many. Or we can see Druva. Outwardly we see he's committing violence. He's killing so many of those yakshas. Or uh, Hanuman violence. So we may think how they can be pure devotee and they are so violent. Because we don't understand that that is not actual violence. Means it is not. Uh, they are not wishing. To harm anyone. They they are doing that to benefit them because soul is eternal. So that sort of. Punishment is felt by the soul. And that will help them and they are getting higher planetary systems or they are getting liberated if they are killed by Krishna. So there that sort of violence or ordinary violence out of false ego is not the same. But outwardly we may think so we, we may question how uh, Druva can be envious. Envious in the in the sense of violent malice. But it was his duty because he was a king to protect the citizens from uh, criminals. So criminals, they unjustly killed his brother. Own relative, what to speak of, citizen. So they killed. So in order to punish them for the protection of all and for their benefit. So that revenge was taken in a violent way, but we may have doubt how he can be pure devotee. He's doing his duty as a king that, that has got proper target behind. And those who were killed by him also got superior uh, planets. They could ascend to those planets just by being killed by Druva. So it is not out of false ego. And there it is mentioned uh, those higher planetary systems which only those who are practicing celibacy can attain. That is, Svargaloka can be attained by householders. But Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, Satiloka only by those who are ascetics, Brahmacharis and Sannyasis. One can attain Brahma Loka by hundred lives, strictly following sannyas and dharma. But again, in commentary of Sai Maharaj and also Vishnu Chakudetakur, it is stated there that that is not the uh, uh, some great value. Because again, you will fall down from there. Liberation is the real value. Or eternal devotion to Krishna. So devotees, they are on different. Um, they have different calculations. Their calculation is only. How to serve Krishna. Not any lower or higher planetary system or service or that. No. Only how they can serve Krishna according to his desire that Brahmachari in Gaur Lila uh, uh, 
in Srivas Thakur's house when Kirtan was going on. Srivas Thakur has a son, a wife, so it means he is not cel celibate. But one, once that Brahmachari came, he was celibate and drinking only milk. He wanted to see the dance of Mahaprabhu. And Srivas Thakur taught, that is to give us teaching, he is very austere. He is practicing celibacy and also only drinking milk. So, okay, I will hide him and let him see. But Mahaprabhu knew there is some outsider. He told, I am not getting satisfaction today in Kirtan. Is there any outsider? Although he knows, but he asked. Then Srivas became afraid and he said, yes, there is one outsider, one Brahmachari, he is following celibacy and also drinking only milk. So I thought he may see your dance. Then Mahaprabhu became very angry on Srivas and also on that Brahmachari. It is not possible to attain Supreme Lord by practicing celibacy or drinking only milk, that external austerity. Only by surrendering to Him, by devoting yourself to Him, you can get, not by these external austerities. And these external austerities cannot give us eternal welfare, can give us some this high position here. But devotees, they are not interested in that. So why Sri Thakur was allowed to participate? He is not celibate. And that uh, Brahmachari is celibate, but he cannot. Why? Because devotion is different thing than ordinary, this Varnashra and Dharma regulations and austerities and all this. That will help give some Sukriti uh, because following Shastra, but that is not what devotees are after. They only want to serve Krishna as per his desire. That is their thinking. Higher or lower in the scale of Karma Kanda or Varnashan Dharma does not pertain to them. It is not applicable to them. Their higher and lower is only how much one is serving Krishna. In Jeva Dharma also very clearly uh, it is stated by Srila Bhakti Thakur that uh, one devotee is asking, there are many household devotees and there are ascetic, so who, who, which is superior? Then Babaji is answering, superiority of devotion is not measured by this, whether one is in ascetic ashram or household ashram, but how much one is dedicated to Supreme Lord. According to that is measured. So here we also directly see this. Srivas Thakur. So we should be concerned about devotion to Krishna. We should do what he wants us to do. That is the point. So here you see even those who are transcendentalists, but if they are not pure devotees, that they are also uh, conditioned by this Tamisra, false ego. And the Tamisra, next one, involves considering death to be the ultimate end. After death, nothing is there. That sort of thinking conception is under Tamisra. This Condition souls we have. The atheists generally think that the body is the self and that everything is therefore ended with the end of the body. Thus they want to enjoy material life as far as possible during the existence of the body. 
their theory is as long as you live, you should live prosperously. Never mind whether you commit all kinds of so-called sins. You must eat sumptuously, beg, borrow and steal. And if you think that by stealing and borrowing you are being entangled in sinful activities for which you will have to pay, then just forget that misconception because after that everything is finished. No one is responsible for anything he does during his life. This atheistic conception of life is killing human civilization. This we see today. For it is without knowledge of the continuation of eternal life. They are cheating as anything, harming others knowingly for their own interest, thinking no one can do anything to me. I will escape this courts and all this, there is nothing. So enjoying at all cost, even at the cost of harming others, no problem for them, because the ultimate goal of life is to enjoy as long as you live, then everything is finished, so why bother? But that is incorrect and they will have to pay for their wrong activities. Although they think they, nothing is there, but that is their conception of it. The reality is, there is Yamaraj, God of death. He knows everything, what someone does, and he gives the result. So that is why these immoral atheists they are of the lowest kind and they are always destroying this humanity. Then next level, higher level, is moral atheists. They may not believe in personality of Godhead, but they believe that morality is, has got value, it is better, and also they believe there is, uh, with that, not everything is finished, and according to your activities, you will get next birth, like Buddhists. They are in moral atheists. They don't believe in God, but they believe in rebirth. And that will, you will get the reactions of your activities. So they, they are careful not to commit violence, but instead they are kind to all living entities. By that they, they, they will pay off their debts and ultimately they want to be liberated from this worldly existence. So there is some humanity there. But in morally, that is nothing. Then superior than that are moral tastes, those who believe in God and they also follow morality as prescribed by him. What is good, what is bad. And if you are good, you will go heaven. If you are bad, you will go to hell. So they are following that based on faith. And superior than that is sadaka bhaktas, those who uh, have proper sambandha jnana. Supreme Lord is eternal, we are eternal. We are his eternal servant. We are conditioned because we are averse to him. And there is continuity of life. And according to your karma you are going, there is not only one life, one chance, no, many lives. So they have proper, clear conception, but they did not yet attain Bhava Bhakti, did not accomplish yet that process of Sadhana Bhakti. Then superior to them are those who are Bhava Bhakti. They are also staying in this world, they are highest. Prema Bhaktas, they are already liberated. But sometimes Yamaraj also plays the pastime of not knowing for the sake of teaching, because in uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, one who has no false ego, even he may kill so many, 
but he will not be bound by reaction to that work. He will not have to suffer. If he has no false hippo means, he is doing under the direction of Supreme Lord, like Arjuna did, or Hanuman or Dhruva. So they are doing that for universal good, for, un for good of all, because they are used as instruments by Supreme Lord for his satisfaction. So they are not doing karma, they will not get any bad reaction. But sometimes we try to misuse this. Like today I heard from Shri Shidra Maharaj one example. There was one Brahmin who was taking care of his garden. And it was a nice garden, but one day somehow by chance one cow came and she destroyed many things there. And he became very angry and he started to beat her and ultimately he killed her of so hard beating. He was so angry. But then he said, it is by the will of Govinda, Govinda Icha. Everything happens by the will of God. So then the, the one who is writing for Yamaraj, that clerk, he did not know who will get this sin now of killing cow. Govinda, because he said it is by his desire, or this man. Then he went to Yamaraj and asked him, and Yamaraj, he said, I also don't know. You please ask Brahma. Then he went to Brahma and Brahma said, OK, give me some time. I will tell you after some time. Then Brahma came in the form of one Brahmin as like a friend. And he came to that Brahmin's house and he uh, spoke with him. And then also he saw garden and he praised. Oh, very nice garden. By the will of Gobinda, so nice garden is here. And these all flowers, by the will of Gobinda, all there and so nicely cleaned everything and all the time praising garden and all the time repeating by the will of Gobinda. Then that Brahmin became, uh, could not tolerate that. Then he said, why you are always saying by the will of Gobinda? I did this garden. I sowed all these plants by my own hand. I cleaned. I am uh, cutting nicely. I am watering. I am. Why you are always. Then Brahma understood. Then Brahma went from there and he told to Yamaraj, it is his sin. Because he was only saying. It is by God's will, we say. But actually, it was not by God's will because he does not accept that everything is by God's will. He, he had that false ego. No, I did. So if one has false ego, then also that will not be true. So he got the sin. Although he, he thought, no, it is not my sin, but he will get that punishment. Like that, those atheists, they are thinking nothing is there. That is wrong. They will get suffering. This under Tamisra, ignorance is due to Tamas. So no one can cheat Supreme Lord. Impossible. He knows everything. What we are doing, what we did, and he's giving the fruit. This under Tamisra ignorance is due to Tamas. The condition of not knowing anything about the spirit soul is called Tamas. This material world is also generally called Tamas because 99% of its living entities are ignorant of their identity as soul. Almost everyone is thinking that he is this body he has no information of the spirit soul. 
guided by this misconception, one always thinks this is my body and anything in relationship with this body is mine. <coughs> Attachment. And it, because it is mine, it has to be for me. So when it is not going according to my will, I become angry, I become violent. For such misguided living entities, sex life is the background of material existence. Actually, the conditioned souls in ignorance in this material world are simply guided by sex life, and as soon as they get the opportunity for sex life, they become attached to so-called home, motherland, children, wealth, and opulence. As these attachments increase, Moha, or the illusion of the bodily concept of life, also increases. Thus, the idea that I am this body and everything belonging to this body is mine also increases. And as the whole world is put into Moha, sectarian societies, families and nationalities are created and they fight with one another. So that is out of all ego fight is coming. Druva is also fighting, but and Arjuna and Hanuman, but that is not out of all ego. There is difference. So only outwardly we may have doubt of his fighting how. Tomorrow we'll hear about Jiva Gusami. Some they could not understand why he argued with that pandit. He should be humbler than a blade of grass. Why he is arguing with him? Rupa and Sanatan did not. They could not understand that he's not arguing for name and fame. He's arguing in order to prove the dignity of Rupa Sanata, because people will not understand about their humility. And they will think they are ignorant and they will be deprived of their mercy. So for that target he did, not for other targets. So Hanuman, Druva, all this, they are having proper target. Not this for selfish enjoyment, for exploiting others. Maha Moha means to be met after material enjoyment. Especially in this age of Kali, everyone is overwhelmed by the madness to accumulate paraphernalia for material enjoyment. These definitions are very nicely given in Vishnu Puran, wherein it is said, only this I will read, Tamo viveko moha syat antah karana vibrama maha moha stu vigeo gramya bhoga sukhai shana maranam hi anda tamisram tamisram kroda uchete avidya pancha parvesha pradurbuta maha tmana. So tomorrow is a very special day, appearance day of Jiva Gosami and also Vaman Bhagavan. And uh, for us, this three Sparsha Mahadvadashi, fasting for today's Parsha Ekadashi, Vishnu will change his side, sleeping. He started sleeping at the beginning of Chaturmasya, and tomorrow, he will change from left side to right side. And there are three prominent Ekadashis in the year. One is Shayan Ekadashi, when he goes to sleep. Then tomorrow, this uh, Parshva Ekadashi, when he changes side, and Utan Ekadashi. They are three most prominent Ekadashis. So tomorrow we will hear.